Hey everyone, this is Kannagi and welcome to my YouTube channel. So it's Friday evening here in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And today I'm gonna make a video on the admission requirements uh, for Masters in Computing and Data Analytics at St. Mary's University, Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Now, I also did that course. Uh, so I'm gonna share my profile, my experience, and at the same time, the steps that I took to get admission into the university. And uh, if you haven't checked out my video yet about the 16 months uh, program, I have attached the link in description. Do check it out and uh, we are soon going to discuss the step-by-step -step procedure to get the admission. So stay till the end. Let's get started. So when we decide to take this first step to pursue higher education, especially in abroad, uh, there's a lot of fears. But the foremost of all is where to get started and how to get started. So many of us, we do not have uh, that guiding person or that guiding mentor who can tell us where to get started or how to get started. So here I am trying to be one, help you guys to guide on your admission process so that I can answer those questions for you and be your guiding mentor. Now, let's just talk about the first and the foremost admission requirement that's stated on the website. You should have a bachelor's in software engineering or computer science engineering for four years or an equivalent and at the same time you should have a cgpa of 70 percent and above now a uh, four years degree is super super important so you should hold that and talking about me i studied in srm university katankulathur chennai uh, back home in india so i had a pretty high cgpa so it made it really easy for me but if you're someone uh, who doesn't have a 70% CGPA, it's still fine. You can still go ahead and apply for the admission because um, at the MSCD program, they look at the overall application. And if you are technically sound and if you have good programming experience, I'm pretty sure they'll, they'll look into it, this application. So if you have 70% and above, then definitely go ahead and submit all your documents. Even if you are 60 and above, I would still say maybe give it a try and uh, they might consider your application. Now, let's talk about the second requirement. So the second requirement, as stated on the website, is a letter of intent that you have to submit describing about your goals and how this program can be beneficial for you as an individual. Now, letter of intent should always be candid and clear and it should describe your feelings and your goals. So, for example, I can touch base on mine. When I wrote my letter of intent, I explained that how uh, taking a data mining course at my SRM University has sparked up that feeling to pursue masters in computing and data analytics. And that's the reason I applied for it. And the another one was I really like challenges. So when I came here, um, it was a very good work environment. I had so many professionals around me. So that kind of thing will definitely help me to be my overall growth and help me to be uh, overall better individual. So basically the letter of intent that just comes from you. So take some time, introspect, think that how this is going to be helpful in making your career or making your dreams come true and just express it. In so now let's move on and talk about the third requirement that's needed. That's your up to date CV. Now your CV or your resume should be very up to date, clean and clear. Now, what do I mean when I say that? So if you're an expert in some technologies, make sure you mention them one by one and you give the reader a clear cut idea. What all do you know? And if you are someone who doesn't have experience, so when I came from India, I did not have any experience, any work experience. So I did fill in my academic pro projects and also mentioned the role in the team that I was playing. The other thing, if you have experience or you are currently working, it just adds cherry on the cake. So you can mention uh, what are you currently doing, what are the technologies that you are currently using and uh, what's your career path. So all these things, when you add in the resume, it gives weightage to your CV. At the same time, do mention or highlight if you have received some awards or if you have achieved scholarships in your academic institution or if you have published any paper, because that will help uh, the readers or the decision makers to stand you out of the crowd. And it will be very easy and convenient for you uh, to make an impact at the same time. Now, before I move on to the 
next two admission requirements which is the take away home programming test and the technical interview i do want to mention that this program is very strict on making sure that they have quality over quantity so they would expect less students than taking a vast majority of the students now the reason is the program needs to focus on getting these people that they have interviewed and selected to be where they want so if they have selected you for the course you get into the program they make sure that you get into your dream job where you want to be and with that being said it's not only them the course it's also you it really depends on you as well but we definitely want to focus that the technically sound students are given a priority so that's the reason these two things have been put into place so what happens in take away home programming test so as soon as you express interest in applying for this course they send you a question a document that has two programming questions and they expect you to write the code in any programming language of your choice so it can be c c++ java whatever you are comfortable with and at the same time apply or uh, put in the word document the screenshots of your running code now for everyone or anyone holding a degree in computer science or software engineering the questions should be pretty straightforward so what makes you different i have few tips that you can apply to make your application a little different now for someone like me um i did not have experience as i have already stated and sometimes there might be someone who doesn't has that high gpa so what you can do is gain points in things like this so maybe uh besides making your code work you can also work on the quality of programming so you can make sure that the code that you are sending as your answer uh it works good quality wise the performance is nice you have made sure that there is no extra iterations added in your code and that will definitely create a positive impact and it will help you to stand out more than others now let's talk about one more major component and what everybody asks questions on it's the technical interview so talking about the technical interview after you submit all your documents uh you get a link where you can go in and select your interviewer based on your flexible time and the interviewer's time and you can put in at what time do you want to conduct that interview so you can put in your preferences you can let them know that you want an interview on skype or hangouts or any any platform that you prefer i would also suggest to have your video on on the interview day because it just gives a good communication wavelength and it's a 1 hour interview session so in this you would be asked to introduce yourself followed by uh, the live programming session now i would always recommend to brush up your programming skills before you go for this interview because uh, the pro- the interviewer is going to ask you to write uh, code snippets which are live and uh, at the same time uh, if you ask me that what all sh- you should brush up so i would say um, learn more about iterative statements um, looping arrays and databases so if you are a software engineering student or if you hold a bachelor's in computer science degree uh, these questions are not hard it just tests your basic programming skills and at the same time it helps the interviewer to know you better as a person and it helps in making a good decision on whether the student should be offered admission or not so do not be scared uh, if you are good technically and if you have good programming skills uh, the interview should be pretty easy and straightforward and if you do not have those maybe because you were working in the industry for a while and now you no longer do programming i would say 110% brush up those skills and do not go into that interview without preparing or without brushing these concepts now few other things that i also want to mention is the english proficiency test requirements so if you are from a country where english is not the a uh, primary language you do have to take english proficiency tests so i did take ielts for the same you can take toefl uh, as well and then i will put those english proficiency test requirements uh, in the link in my description uh, so for ielts i do know that there should be an overall score of 6.5 and more and you cannot have 
um, score of below six in any of the academic section. The last thing that they also require is three letter of recommendations. Now, from those three, two comes from your academic institution or your academic supervisor where you pursued your bachelor's degree and one comes from your organization where you are currently working. So now these have to be third party. So that means that your academic supervisor has to use his official university email to send your letter of recommendations directly to the university that is St. Mary's. So you do have to tell your professors to do that. For you. If you do not have experience, uh, so you wouldn't be able to get a LOR from your work organization, that's okay too. You can take three LORs from your academic supervisors because I did the same and got three letters from my three academic supervisors in different subjects, so it's all right. MSCDA program definitely focuses on quality. So you have to make sure that your application stands out from others. And this program is pretty on, heavy on coursework because uh, it's treated as a two year course intensive program. So in the end, they can get you a three years post graduation work permit. And also at the same time, they can help you reach your dream job. So the admission requirements are quite stricter uh, to focus on quality, as I mentioned. So make sure you stand out. Do mention in the comments if you want uh, me to help you out. I can definitely um, help you guys. And if there is anything else that you want me to discuss, do mention in the comments. And with that, I end my video today. Do like, share and subscribe. Bye-bye for now. Take care.